Europe basically said, no, Google, uh, you're going to pay. And on a ta Irish tax issue, Apple was forced uh, to pay uh, as well. Dan, is this uh, just the EU trying to uh, regulate uh, itself and be the most innovative regulatory uh, beast uh, out there? Or are these just big companies acting poor, poorly? <laughs> yeah, I love this stuff. But, hey, listen, um, so this was an interesting week just because Apple had its event. Apple had, um, you know, a lot of, was getting a lot of attention. And then Apple got strapped with a, you know, 13 or so billion dollar tax bill. Company has been fighting on the onus that it had paid taxes in uh, the U.S., so it shouldn't have to pay taxes. And 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 this came back to me, and I did some some you know kind of second tier TV about this. But I was talking about how like one is you 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 really can't avoid paying taxes anywhere. So you know you know tax efficiency is the strategy of every company. They take advantage of every loophole, and companies like Apple have more lawyers than ever necessary, more lawyers and accountants than ever necessary to figure out ways to pay less tax in different regions. Like Ireland's often been a, a, a market that has been particularly ripe for um, avoiding or delaying or deferring taxes. There was a period where under Donald Trump, you were able to bring, uh, you know, repatriate dollars um, to the US at a lower penalty or lower cost, which a lot of companies took advantage of. And now what's happening is Europe is coming home to roost on the fact that maybe you did or didn't pay an, a fair share of tax over in Europe. Uh, you know, Pat, I'm always one of those people that if the law is written a certain way, I, I would I admire companies for finding a way to be as efficient as possible. But if their taxes are due, the taxes are due. Um, I'm sure they're going to try to find a way to kick this can down the road for another 10 years, um, you know, before they'll actually have to pay it. Because the fundamental belief of these companies is they'll do more with a dollar than than the government will, which I don't think I could disagree with in any circumstance. They also could then use this money to do some uh, uh, absorbent buyback. If anyone's ever checked the chart of Apple buybacks, it's <laughs> it's remarkable. Um, so that that's kind of the situation on Apple. I mean, you know, EU. I say this every time, Pat, that we end up in talking on this topic. Their innovation is stagnant. The economy is not growing. Uh, their best companies tend to leave, and that's because it's just not a great place to build a company. It's its entire focus is on. You know, they've got this privacy focus, but this privacy focus is more about data control. The data control practice is all about giving strong abilities for these companies to find uh, the DMA, to be able to charge tax and find these companies and speed bumps and tolls for existing. You know, companies like Spotify and others that have been successful in Europe, they, they leave Europe. They, they want to redomicile because it's not a, a, a great place to build companies. And that's unfortunate. But this isn't like unique. I mean, Google also got hit with a two and a half billion dollar fine for uh, search. They've had over eight billion dollars in fines over the last like five years or so. Um, you know, one was related to search. One was related to shopping. Um, you know, they're, they, and the entire thing with Google, similarly to the Apple thing, is just they're looking at fundraising activities. So there's very little GDP growth. There's very little startup few unicorns, they don't seem to exist there. So the way that uh, Vestager historically in EU competition and leadership in this particular area make money is they is they find companies. Does that mean that I genuinely believe these companies do no wrong? Absolutely not. I'm not suggesting by any means that these companies do not take advantage of their technology to give themselves preference or misuse data. Um, I'm just saying that the the there is a conflicted policy set in Europe that continues to make doing business there not particularly lucrative for big tech companies and startups. You're seeing features not being rolled out in that market uh, frequently by companies. And eventually, if it gets too strict, they may just not roll features or come to these markets at all. So, you know, Pat, it's been it's been a revolving door. It's been Google. It's been Microsoft. It's been Qualcomm. It's been Intel. It's been Apple. It's been Amazon. It is a merry-go-round of 10 figure plus fines in Europe. What I'm not seeing though right now, or I'm at least not understanding right now is what is their plan to actually stimulate and create enthusiasm and excitement for tech to participate, to grow, to invest both at the startup end. And then of course, for big tech, it's getting kind of murky over there. Yeah, it's hard for me to peanut butter any of this stuff uh, uh, going on there. Cause some of those, some of these I, I totally get, I mean, 
statistically speaking, Google has a monopoly in the digital advertising uh, market. And not only um, do they have the, you know, double click is probably the biggest weapon. And by the way, they bought double click when I was uh, at Alta Vista, like the best acquisition uh, that, 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 that was made here. And this is before most advertising was, was digital. So technically they, they, they do have a monopoly and I don't even think it's the fines that, that, that make any difference at all. I mean, uh, Google has wrapped up 8.25 billion uh, dollars in, in fines, but that doesn't mean anything. Sorry, 8.25 billion euros. Um, over the last uh, decade, uh, it means it means nothing to these companies. Speed bump, speed bump. Unless, unless they have to uh, charge. I think you know, w- with Apple, it, they have forty eight billion dollars left of cash. Okay, that they can't buy any big companies. Um, they are can't overinvest in in you know markets here. So all they can do is is share buybacks. So that they're in this weird, this weird conundrum. But but only if you make them change something is it going to hurt. So for instance, uh, Apple having to allow third-party uh, app ecosystems uh, into their store, that is going to be difficult for Apple. And we've seen uh, Apple try to not do what it's been asked to do multiple multiple times. And I'm sorry, I am not buying the security thing. I think Apple is is acting, you know, quite frankly, like a little baby uh, who was told it can't play uh, with this toy, and it's going to sit in the corner, it's going to scream, it's going to gnaw, and it's going to gnash. Uh, but you know, you can sideload on Android. Uh, you have adults. You can uh, you can do that. Uh, I think the Android not being secure uh, is 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 a non-issue. Uh, at this point, I keep, you know, waiting for the cataclysm, uh, cataclysmic event that Apple keeps talking about with Android. And who knows? Maybe in ten years, uh, it might. But I just think it's uh, an excuse. And when it comes to a lot of these big companies, they just want to be the biggest monopolist, uh, biggest monopolist uh, uh, out there. 